Hello and welcome once again to the Liberty Ginger Podcast. I am your host, Mike Ursery, and this is episode number seven. Do you remember the episode from two weeks ago when I was complaining about the snow? Because where I live, we had about, oh, we got about maybe an inch of snow on the ground, and it was pretty cold, it was below freezing. Well, what I was experiencing two weeks ago is nothing like what happened over this past week. Oh, where I live, we got four inches of snow on the ground, and this week I have been miserable. If you haven't noticed by now, I really do not like snow that much. I am not fond of snow. I prefer the time of the year when it's warm. I'll even accept hot. It can be in the 90s outside. It can be sweltering heat, and I'm okay with that. But cold temperatures, snow, ice, all of that, I am not fond of that. I do not like this time of the year. And here it is still, well... It's the beginning of December now, and winter still technically is not here yet. We won't have winter technically until December 21st, um, so that's still three weeks away. And the weather outside is already freezing. And we're going to have this for three, maybe four more months. So for the next three to four months, you're going to hear me complaining about the cold. We had a snowstorm blow through Missouri uh, this past week, and where I live, we got four inches of snow on the ground. You know, there is a walkway between my home and my car where it's parked, and the walkway was completely covered in snow. When the snow first fell, I walked through it, and I left a set of footprints along my way to the car to go to work that morning. Those are the same footprints I have been stepping in ever since because I just don't want to walk through the snow. That first night, the snow froze over and became icy, and the next morning, I almost slipped because, well, it was morning and I just wasn't really thinking, and I almost slipped and fell because I stepped in those footprints to get to the car and they were icy. Hopefully, no one saw that. I'm not sure if they did. If they did, they probably got a good laugh out of it. I didn't fall, but I came very close to falling. Um, but enough about that. I hope all of you had a very good Thanksgiving holiday, a very good Thanksgiving break. I hope people got to catch up with family and friends, and I hope they just got to just kick back and relax for a couple of days. If you dared to brave the Black Friday shopping, congratulations to you for willing to go out and do that. If you're willing to go out and risk your life for the smart TV, the iPad, the MacBook, or whatever it was that you were trying to get, whatever Black Friday deal you were after, if you went out and you accomplished what you set out to do, kudos to you. I didn't partake in Black Friday shopping. I don't like going out on Black Friday. I see all the pictures and all the video footage of just how crazy people can be because everyone wants to get that Black Friday deal that they're after, and you know, there's always a... um a limited supply of what people are going for. And so you see folks just bum rushing stores. You see folks fighting each other. You see folks falling over each other. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to go out into that. I want nothing to do with it. I do not go out on Black Friday. The Black Friday discounts just are not worth the hassle of going out and risk being trampled by other people who are out Black Friday shopping. I prefer to stay in, and I'll still take care of my Christmas shopping. Um, I have a feeling that most of the people out on Black Friday aren't Christmas shopping for other people anyway. I think that if they are willing to risk their necks going after something, they're probably going out and getting it for themselves. That's not to say that every single person is doing that, but I have a feeling that a lot of the people going out on Black Friday are going out because they want to get something for themselves. They're really not so much worried about Christmas list of their family members they or friends or whoever. They are trying to get whatever it is they're getting because they want it. And then, of course, if you were watching the news over this past week, um, you would have seen that there wasn't just pandemonium happening in America on Black Friday. There was pandemonium happening at the U.S.-Mexico border this past Sunday. 
Do you remember all the talk after the midterm elections when everyone talked about how the migrant caravan just disappeared? All of a sudden, you had dead people on the left saying that Donald Trump stopped talking about the, par- the, the migrant caravan because, well, the elections were over and there was no need for him to talk about it anymore. And then you also had people on the right alleging the left of the same exact thing. Yes, we all did stop talking about the migrant caravan, but that does not mean that the migrant caravan went away. No, they ca- they continued to move north, and they arrived at the border this past Sunday, and they were met. They were not met with open arms or smiles or any kind of welcome at all. What they were met with was tear gas and border patrol agents dressed in riot gear, and the reason why. They were dressed in riot gear and the reason why they ended up shooting tear gas at these migrants is because they were rushing the border. Do you remember so many weeks for so many weeks leading up to midterms? We heard that this caravan was making its way to the United States and they were going to request asylum here in America. Uh, Rushing the border is not the same as requesting asylum. So I don't understand First off, why they were rushing the border when they were supposed to just request asylum. And did they even intend to request asylum at all if they were rushing the border? And I also don't understand how far did they think they would actually get if they tried to just rush the border and break in the way that they were trying. They were trying to cut holes in the fence. They were trying to cut holes in the fence and get into the United States that way. That's not requesting asylum. That's entering the country illegally, in plain sight, with everyone watching. Ever since Donald Trump ran for president, he's been talking about people entering this country illegally, and all of his supporters and other conservatives in government and in media have been talking about the same thing. People trying to enter the country illegally. And then this past Sunday, that's exactly what you see trying to take place. They're not requesting asylum. They're trying to break in. And on top of that, not only are they trying to break in, but they were also throwing stuff at Border Patrol agents who were protecting the border. And and then you have people on the left who are complaining about, oh, they were firing tear gas. They, how, how inhumane and cruel they were firing tear gas at these people. Well, those people were throwing rocks. So, yeah, I mean, we can sit here and talk about why they fired tear gas all you want, but they were throwing rocks. So these people, these Border Patrol agents, fired tear gas, and they also fired rubber bullets. They were doing that to protect themselves because people were throwing rocks at them. But that tear gas narrative was pushed really hard um, on Sunday and also in the following days while people were still talking about this. Um, They only talked about it for a few days, though, which, which is the same as pretty much anything. We don't talk about anything for very long because there are so many things that happen in any given week. Just let's just listening to this show, you kind of figure that out because every single week I'm talking about something different. This is episode number seven, and here I am talking about migrant migrants storming the border. I wasn't talking about that last week. I was talking about something completely different in that short episode that I did for all of you before uh, ahead of Thanksgiving. But we heard the talk um, about the tear gas, and we also saw the photos. I'm sure you probably saw the one image of the woman running with two small children. She was, uh, the picture shows her running away from the tear gas, and you can tell that the children are crying. Uh, You probably saw this picture zoomed in so that all you see is the woman and the two small children. Now, Running away from tear gas, of course, that is pretty scary. And for a small child, that is going to be very scary, especially when you have the noises along with it and you also have the people yelling. Yes, a child is definitely going to be scared. But think about, I don't know if you saw the zoomed out um, the zoomed out version of that photo. You probably saw it just zoomed in. So all you see is the woman and the two small children running. But whenever you zoom out, you see... A crowd of people some of them are running it looks like some of them are walking and then you see some who are just standing around and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because you know we've seen two different versions of the same photograph 
And depending on which photograph you've seen, you've seen you've seen the situation the way that it was intended for you to see it. You either saw the situation of the whole picture with everybody in it, or you saw the picture of just the woman running with the two children and you were made to think that it was actually more horrible than what it actually was. And you had several news outlets uh, reporting on the tear gas and then talking about it even more afterwards. Um, ABC News did a story where they interviewed a, um, a migrant who was traveling with her five children and they had her describe uh, the scene and had her describe her own experience. And they quoted her as saying, I felt like I was going to die. Uh, the Washington Post, um, a few days after the incident, the Washington Post uh, published an opinion column where someone wrote about why you should never fire tear gas at children. And the reason why is I didn't I didn't read through all of it. I only read through some of it. And they talked about how children breathe so much faster than uh, grown adults do. And so therefore they breathe in more of the tear gas and they breathe it in at a rapid rate. But with that tear gas incident, um, one thing you had, it was, was you started a, I don't want to call it a discussion. It's more like a fight. It started a fight. Um, a lot of shouting back and forth between the left and the right, kind of like with everything else, uh, talking about the use of tear gas. Um, the left saying that the Trump administration is, is absolutely wrong and horrible for even doing that. And then you had the right saying that, well, Border Patrol fired tear gas at immigrants during the Obama administration. Uh, this one article from the Washington Times, uh, which was published uh, last Monday, uh, that was November 26th. Um, the Washington Times, an article written by Steve Denan, um, starts out, the same tear gas agent that the Trump administration is taking heat for deploying against a border mob this weekend is actually used fairly frequently including more than once a month during the later years of President Obama, sorry, President Barack Obama's administration, according to Homeland Security data. U.S. Customs and Border Protection had, has used two chlorobenzylidine melanolatrile, I'm not even going to try to read that, or CS since 2010 and deployed it 26 times in fiscal 2012 and 27 times in 2013. The use, the use dropped after that, but was still deployed three times in 2016, Mr. Obama's final full year in office. Use of CS rose again in fiscal 2017, which was split between Mr. Obama and Mr. Trump, and reached 29 deployments in fiscal 2018, which ended two months ago, according to CBP data seen by the Washington Times. So we went from, oh, the Trump, the Trump administration is wrong for doing this to, oh, well, Barack Obama did this too. And I'm not going to really go on about what the left has said and what the right has said or any of the um, justification the left is probably, or even just excuses that the left has probably tried to use for the Obama administration doing it. I'm not going to go anything about the right calling the left hypocrites because the left was criticizing Trump for using tear gas. And then when they brought up that Obama did it, they said that, um, Someone on The View actually said that they don't care what Obama did. They only care about what Trump did. Well, at least The View is keeping it honest. But one thing that I will say about this is that I saw a tweet from uh, George Takei. And was actually, I was actually rather impressed by this tweet. Uh, George Takei, as you probably know, um, well, of course, he was the guy who was in Star Trek several years ago. If you watch Star Trek, I really never was big into Star Trek. Um, but... He he's also an outspoken critic of Donald Trump, and he's also a supporter of Barack Obama. But here's one thing that he tweeted. He tweeted this out on Wednesday. This was November 28th. He said, I've spoken out forcefully against the recent use of tear gas at our borders. I've since learned that this practice was commonplace under Obama, just not widely reported. I readily admit that my outrage is unfairly placed. This isn't just a Trump issue, it is an American issue. Wow. Now this tweet, this is a high quality tweet. This is a person admitting that they were wrong about something and they went back and they corrected it. 
he admitted that his outrage was misplaced because he was previously unaware about the uh, the Obama administration using tear gas against immigrants trying to cross the border. And he was putting all of his outrage towards the Trump administration. But then once he learned the truth, he he uh, walked it back and put it out there that he was wrong. So I am I am impressed by this. I would like to see a lot more of this, to be honest. As for uh, the migrants, um, they retreated back into Mexico after trying to break through the, the U.S. border. Uh, the ones who did manage to get across, uh, you probably saw that 42 uh, migrants were arrested. Those migrants were released and they were not charged with anything. So that is something. According to BuzzFeed News, these 42 people consisting of uh, 27 men and 15 women and children, uh, they were set to be charged for illegal entry by the Justice Department, um, but they were they were later asked to drop the charges because of medical issues. BuzzFeed News also said that uh, it's unclear what was going to happen with these 42 people, whether they're going to just be deported or what, I'm really not sure. Something else you probably saw in the news was uh, news about uh, General Motors. Um, General Motors reporting that it's lost, or actually, well, it's going to cut uh, $6 billion in costs. Um, and it's also going to do away with more than 14,000 jobs, and it's going to shut down factories in Canada, Ohio, Michigan, and Maryland. It was reported that uh, GM is claiming that it's it's lost a billion dollars because of the tariffs that Donald Trump has placed on steel. And we've seen many stories like that um, affecting several different companies, not just GM, but other companies around the country as well. Um, it's also having an effect on uh, farmers as well. Everyone's kind of feeling the effects of uh, these tariffs that are being placed on imports. And it's having an effect on people. It's having an effect on their jobs. It's having an effect on companies and corporations. But in this case of GM, uh, them losing a billion dollars, it's only part of the story. Uh, like I said, they've lost close to $6 billion. Um, one billion of that is from tariffs. That leaves another five plus billion though. Uh, the co-founder of uh, Think Liberty, or well, I should say one of the co-founders of Think Liberty, um, and he is also now writing for Being Libertarian, as are many of us who were writing for Think Liberty before. He wrote an article that was posted to beinglibertarian.com this past week, and it's about, it's about GM and about them losing money, about them cutting jobs. And the article is entitled, GM Cuts Over 10,000 Jobs, and No, It's Not All Due to Tariffs. And in this article, he talks about how, well, he talks about GM losing uh, losing money about them closing down factories. And then he also says that um, uh, GM is going to discontinue certain vehicle motto, uh, models. Um, these models include uh, the Chevy Volt, the Chevy Cruze, the Chevy Impala, the Cadillac XTS, the Cadillac CT6, and the Buick LaCrosse. Um, Vinny says in his article, the company that has stated that these measures are being taken to boost profits and reduce costs as it shifts to a business model that comes with higher expenses upon market entry, specifically electric and automated vehicles. Uh, if you have not read this article yet, I recommend that you do. Um, it's very informative and it, it says a lot. And Vinny does a really good job of, uh, of uh, making this point about how, yeah, the tariffs having are having some effect on this, but the tariffs are not only to blame. Um, he continues on in his piece. He says, while those who take issue with terrorists will be quick to point out the economic policy handed down by the Trump administration as the primary cause of the downsizing currently being undertaken by American automakers, tariffs seem to only be a portion of the issue at hand. Yes, yes, the tariffs play a role as GM and Ford have both stated tariffs on steel have cost the company upwards of $1 billion. And Toyota claims the tariffs will rise the cost of popular models by one to three thousand dollars however tariffs do not seem to be the primary issue in this case along with the losses that come with tariffs the automotive industry is also seeing a sharp decline in consumer preference for passengers cars and a growth in preference for larger vehicles like pickup trucks and suv models so it's not just 
the tariffs that are having an effect on GM and causing them to lose money and causing them to lose profits. It's also consumer choice. It's almost as if the market is doing what the market typically does. Don't you think? There are certain models of vehicles that people just don't want to buy because like what Vinny says in his article, people don't want to buy passenger cars anymore. They're, you have more and more people wanting to buy SUVs and they're wanting to buy pickup trucks and they're not just buying SUVs and pickup trucks that are made by GM. Um, no, they're making SUVs and pickup trucks that are made by other companies. Um, such as Hyundai and Nissan, etc. Vinny also says in his article that uh, GM is making the decision to do this now while the economy is strong, and he kind of he kind of ends it on a question. And uh, here's what he says at the very end: um, He asks, "Are these moves wise? Do you think these auto companies are finally taking proactive measures to avoid another fe federal bailout situation, or is this just another example of a dying giant gasping for air despite being artificially propped up by federal subsidies? And he's talking about the uh, the GM bailout of 2008. Um, George W. Bush, right before he left office, he, uh, he uh, gave a bailout to GM because they reported that they had lost a lot of money. And then whenever Barack Obama was inaugurated in 2009, he oversaw GM's recovery. And so Vinny is talking about that, that. That's what Vinny is talking about there when he's saying artificially propped up by federal subsidies. And, you know, is this going to, is it going to turn into another situation like that? Is GM, is GM making the right moves now? Um, to avoid that situation, or is this something that we're going to visit again if the government's going to have to make a decision to offer another bailout to GM? Hopefully not. Hopefully that's not the case. Um, I don't know. You never know what Trump is going to do. He, Trump is so unpredictable. You never know what he's going to do because he's always playing 4D chess with somebody. The president, of course, had some words for GM. Um, he took to Twitter to share these words uh, in one tweet, which he posted this past Tuesday, uh, November 27th. He said, if GM doesn't want to keep their jobs in the United States, they should pay back the $11.2 billion bailout that was funded by the American taxpayer. And then the following day on Wednesday, he tweeted some more about GM. And here's what he said. The reason that the small truck business in the U.S. is such a go-to favorite is that, for many years, tariffs of 25% have been put on small trucks coming into our country. It is called the chicken tax. If we did that with cars coming in, many more cars would be built here and GM would not be closing their plants in Ohio, Michigan, and Maryland. Get smart, Congress. Also, the countries that send us cars have taken advantage of the U.S. for decades. The president has great power on this issue because of the GM event. It is being studied now. So there you have the president doing what he's, what he always does when he's upset about something. He goes on Twitter and he tweets about it. And one last thing, uh, before I wrap up this episode, um, there was a lot of stuff that happened this week, but I try not to keep these episodes too long. Um, so I only go over certain things in the news uh, GM and the micro caravan, of course, were the biggest things. Uh, there was also an incident of, um, Russia attacking Ukrainian ships. And this is something that did not get a lot of attention. And I felt it should have Russia and Ukraine, um, have tensions with each other. Uh, they are still having disputes over, uh, Crimea. And last Sunday, uh, that was November 25th, um, the Russians had fired on three Ukrainian ships that were going through the Kerch Strait. Um, it said that three uh, Ukrainian soldiers were injured. Um, it also said that the Russians boarded those three ships and they took 20, uh, 20 uh, Ukrainian sailors prisoner. Ukraine has called this an act of aggression. And their president has also talked about declaring martial law. 
And if you're wondering why Russia is doing this, um, well, according to uh, Vox.com, and yes, you heard that, and you're probably thinking, Vox, really? Yeah, Vox. This is uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, what they point out here, uh, they point out three reasons for it, um, and what they say is. The first is that Ukraine's Orthodox Church said last month that it would separate from Russia's. That's a big deal as Mos Moscow used the church to spread its propaganda to devout Ukrainians. Russia has counted on the church for the past three centuries. Now Moscow has lost a major way to spread its influence. That's a problem for Vladimir Putin as the schism allows Ukraine to become more independent of Russia, right as he's trying to bring it under fur further under Moscow's control. And uh, Vox explains earlier in this article about how um, taking Crimea from the Ukraine was a major accomplishment for Vladimir Putin. And the reason why is because it gives it gives Russia access to certain ports and waterways. Um, what they say is what they say here is that the water around Crimea matters for for one more than 80 percent of Ukraine's exports go through the Sea of Azov, which makes it vital to an independent Ukraine. It's also an important fishing hub that makes or that provides both food for the region and an economic boon. So Russia wants to have Ukraine under its control uh, for um, economic incentives. And then uh, the other two reasons that Vox points out um, are pretty interesting here. Uh, the second reason they point out is that uh, Ukraine's president, Petro Poroshenko, is up for re-election. Uh, this coming March, um, Vox points out that the race is already close um, and taking access to the Sea of Azov away from Ukraine might hurt him by negatively impacting the economy. So not just economic incentive for Russia, but also they want to make they also want to try to have an impact on Ukraine's economy because they can because then, of course, you know, the person who's in power at the time is going to take the blame for it. And so. They want a new Ukrainian president. Obviously, they want this guy out. And then they said that also Putin has a declining approval rating in Russia, and he wants to use military force to try to improve uh, improve that um, approval rating. So you have multiple reasons here for this happening. It was reported later in the week that uh, President Trump has canceled a meeting that he was set to have with Putin at the G20 summit, which comes up here a little later. That meeting now is called off, and the reason for it is because of what's happening right now between Russia and Ukraine. So that's something to keep an eye on going forward. Um, and then in next week's episode, I might be able to have an update on that, hopefully. If not, um, as soon as more news about this comes out, of course, it will be on this podcast uh, but I'm going to wrap up this week's episode. I really hope you all enjoyed listening to this. This has been a very busy week for me. So if it sounds like I was just kind of rambling on here, I apologize for that. Uh, next week will be a much better episode. But thank you all for listening. And thank you all for listening to not just my podcast, but all the podcasts on the Think Liberty Network. Uh, you can find the Think Liberty Network at most places where podcasts are hosted. We are on Spotify. We are on iTunes. We're in the Google Play Store. We're on iHeartRadio, Stitcher. You can find us just about everywhere, iHeartRadio. If there is a certain podcast app that you like to use and the Think Liberty Network is not on it, let us know, and we will try to get the Think Liberty Network and all the shows in the network on that podcast app. Not just listening to the podcast, we also ask you to check out all of our content. Uh, you can find our content at uh, beinglibertarian.com, also at think-liberty.com. Uh, you can find Think Liberty Network, or rather Think Liberty, um, on several social media platforms. Uh, we are on Facebook, Think Liberty. We're on Twitter, at think underscore liberty. Uh, the same with Steemit and Minds under that same handle. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram. Just do a search for Think Liberty, all one word. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you all again next week.